For uh, cutting out of uh, that, we're taking you to a briefing now where former ANC chairperson and uh, Northwest Premier Suprema Umabelo has uh, now arrived at the Deleriaville uh, Town Hall where he is set to brief branches about the recent suspension of a number of prominent ANC members by the party's interim provincial committee. We take you there live now. The last word in all the affairs of the ANC, all the affairs, the last word comes from the branches of the African National Congress. That is why when you go to a national conference, if you can choose that there's not going to be a leadership here that we're electing, there'll be no national executive committee. So there can be some people who come there and say, but we are the NEC, no. Because the branches at conference will have decided that, no, this time around, in this conference, we are deciding that there's no national executive. Because you are the last line of defense of the revolution. I'm not saying go to the next conference and say there's no NEC, right? So I think I must clarify that, uh, the media. So, and I will continue to call you the last line of defense. Because when all else is done, and when all else fails, when all else comes dysfunctional, the last hope of the African National Congress is its branches. So comrades, you are the frontline troopers of the revolution. You are the last line of defense of the revolution. So the strength of the ANC is in the roots of the ANC, which is its branches. That's why I want to thank my chairperson here, my secretary, what six and what seven, you comrades who brought me up. And you have said, we want you to come, and this is very important, eh? it's part of the DC. The branches say, we want you to come. So some people, some political morons, the concoctors, somewhere, those who don't respect their branches, those who are not active in their branches, they don't know that when the branch say you must come, you have to be there. You can't say some wara wara story. Hey, you are held up. Right? So the branch, what 12, they said to me, the first time we want you to run a lecture, a bit of that lecture was on economics, but our focus in that lecture was on what we call revolutionary unity of the ANC from below. Revolutionary unity of the ANC from below. That's when other branches started saying, we want the same thing to happen in our branches. And I said to those comrades, no, you don't have to talk to me must talk to the branch. That's why they spoke to the chairperson every time. They speak to the chairperson, the chairperson will say in the BEC, we are releasing you, go and talk to the members of the African National Congress. And I do it because I respect the branch. You'll also know, comrades, that on several occasions when we got dis disbanded and disbanded and disbanded, every time the branch will say, but we still want, we want you to serve in the structures of the ANC, right? And I've, I've always agreed. I, you may not know my sister, I, I came into the ANC in 1983. 1983. It's how many years? It's 38. I'm not saying I've been around. I'm just mentioning a figure, because there's a difference between having been around and then mentioning the figure. Now, the fact that I've been in the ANC for 38 years, it doesn't mean that I'm better than yourself and yourself. No, no, no. Those are just yes. So I'm just saying that uh, those who did not know, Kardarasamo province, Bapilanzavara, Supra, Gemfan, 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 and so on. Uh, it's 30... Uh, eight years. Now, why are we here, comrades? We are here because uh, we are being disrupted. 
<laughs> as simple as that, right? We are here because uh, there are people who don't want us to continue to be active in the NCK, but that message is not go far. I want to read that message. Because I want to show you where this thing comes from. This thing about DC, Warawara, uh, and so on. Now, if these things can happen to you in future comrades, where you get suspended, you get expelled, and so on. So if you get expelled, you become an ANC activist. If they say, no, but you can't be an ANC activist, you say, I'll be an ANC volunteer. And then you come together, you form ANC volunteers, uh, ANC volunteers uh, forum. So you have a huge number of ANC volunteers and have a huge number of ANC activists because uh, you know when a person with high acute uncontrollable levels of depression <laughs> has got a gun loaded with bullets you must know that when you face that person yeah. you run a risk of being killed by that person yeah. so you are going to suffer the consequences of a high levels acute of depression so that person can kill you so we are in a situation where there's, there are some people with loaded guns and they are going through high levels acute levels of political depression <laughs> so the likelihood is that all the branches that are here all of them i'm not talking members i'm talking branches a clause in the Constitution will be used to say you must be suspended as a branch or the branch must be dissolved <coughs> because of high acute levels of political Pressure. depression. <coughs> so when, when you are led by such people, you know you are facing danger all the time, but don't run away. Yeah. You must confront the monster. If you happen to become a casualty along the way, there are many other generations behind you that will come and continue to confront the monster. <laughs> Solomon Matangu, the young man, when he was uh, hanged by the apartheid system, young man, his only fault was to be part of the revolution, to propagate the revolution. He said, tell my people that I love them. My blood will nourish the tree that will bear the fruits of freedom. Yes. That's Solomon Matangu, a young man. He did not run away from being dealt with by people who are mad. He confronted the monster. Now, let me read to you uh, this message. It's from a group called Tomami now. I'm sure you know Tumami. Uh, it was at 16 minutes past five. I'm looking for the date here. It's, I can't see. There's a date. But anyway, this message is from some moron, a political moron, who is using the office of the ANC for his nefarious political agendas. War message. Yesterday, I observed how the PP, the PTT, this PTT provincial task team, that is what the one that came before the IPC, mm. how this list is circulating in the social media was scrutinized or attacked, and I formulated a narrative that Supra and his cronies are elephants in our chat group. Which proved to me that I'm not the only person that hates Supra. <laughs> and further that unity will only happen if Supra is expelled from the African National Congress. Yeah. Now, because of technology, unfortunately, he can't reverse this message. Mm. It yes, it happened. It happened. This message is a message of 20... 18, 20, 19. We'll look for the date. 
That's far back, ne? So it means there are people who have been working on expulsion of Supra from the African National Congress. And this person is part of the DC. This DC that we are going through now. He's part of the DC. He's called a technical administrative officer of the DC. He's the one who writes on behalf of the coordinator. He's the legal advisor of the coordinator and the IPC, this person, this moron. <laughs> and then he's a, he, he, he's a leader. He must sit there. And we must observe him as a leader and respect him as a leader. When we know he has written such things using the platform of the African National Congress. This Tomamena group, I think it is the one that when I was still the child said it must be closed. I said, we don't have WhatsApp branches. No, branches meet like this. No? They don't meet in a WhatsApp. And people continue to insist, insist to have uh, this WhatsApp group. Marbar to because at least now we can get the evidence of the plan. So I thought you must know, comrades, we are going to produce this in the DC. Uh, to the DC uh, and so on. So we are going to produce this. That's why I'm saying it on TV as part of the evidence why this disciplinary committee must recuse itself. It must go. In that disciplinary committee, you have got Hoffman Halle. He's from Freiburg. In one meeting, remember he was an MEC when I was the Premier. So I appointed him as the as the MEC, right? And I explained to him why I was made him an MEC. One of the reasons was not because he was a good leader. He knows he will be watching this. He knows, I said to him, we need to nurture you, we need to save you because you are vulnerable, you are fragile. <laughs> right? So in order to help him with the fragility, <laughs> we then appointed him to be an MEC. Fast forward. He then has some problems after Nazareth. And then in a meeting where the president was and the national chair, he says to President Ramaphosa, President Ramaphosa, he was shaking when he was speaking. Oh, this man, does he need some water? What's wrong with him? President Ramaphosa, you know, I want to to resolve the problems of Northwest. This man, referring to me, this man, you must take him, take him to a far country. <laughs> when he is in that country, please take away his passport so that he must never fly back into South Africa. Because he's a problem, not only for Northwest, he's a problem for South Africa. You will hear later, I'm going to say some things. You have been calling you. you. You have been saying to me, you want to talk to me about step aside. So you are lucky. Today I'm going to talk about step aside. I've not said anything. You can go and look at your records. I've said nothing. Nothing. It's zero. On step aside. I know people might have concluded that I've said something. Because they, they think I speak all... I've said nothing. I've never said anything. On step aside. But when they speak, they say, yeah, people like Supra. We know that... Uh, they are anti step aside. So get all the calluses on them not. Later, the stop aside. So I'm going to request you to be a bit patient. I'll come back to it. So he says, keep him in that far flung country. He must stay there. He must die there and rot there. We are in a meeting, 10th floor, Lutula House. And what does the leadership of the ANC say in that meeting? No, I want to speak. But no, you can't speak, you are a leader. A leader must be able to absorb the pain and the criticism. It's fine, right? <laughs> but don't take away the right to correct some of the things. But it was taken away. In that DC, you've got uh, Wendy Matimel. She's the chair. This Wendy Matimel was an MEC who was not performing well. And I decided to remove her. Right? 
and now she has come back to settle the score. In that DC, you've got uh, Bushimate, the worst monster. Comrades, you know, uh, and you the media, one of the reasons why I want to go to Parliament, to the National Council of Provinces, and talk about Section 100, one of the things I'm going to do there is on video. I want to show the country people who came to me and apologized to me and said to me, Comrade Supra, we didn't know that the person who has been removed through this force was you. The person who was running the operation center, the person who was giving us the drugs, the money, the petrol, the tires, the phones, the airtime, the food, and everything else is Bushiman. It's not me who is saying it, that it's on video. It's these people that you are talking about, Cheme. Those people, their head, the head of that team was saying, Nabra Supra, I'm a, I'm a hardened criminal. He said, I have done more than 25 years in jail. Among other things, I murder people. That's my profession. And he says, your leadership of the ANC came to me and said to me, we want your services. Get other criminals throughout the country because they've got a network. Those criminals must come to Mahikeng and project themselves as community. And they did it. So these guys are telling me, and I said, can we put on video or put us on video? And they said, the person who was running the entire operation is Bushimap. Hmm. And today, I must sit with the poor pizza. Why is it go Takame? We must sit in a disciplinary committee where Bushimaki is a member of that disciplinary committee. Yes, he's a member of that committee. And he must sit in that DC and finish me off completely. He must now use the DC to now say, you are expelled from the African National Congress. A person who said, who planned, who concocted, who financed, everything that happened around the so-called Supra must fall. And I must call him my fellow comrade in a DC of the African National Congress. I'm not going to do that. No, not me. That video, comrades, I'm going to play it to the parliament. Because I said to them, I want to come and speak in parliament. And I said, whatever I want to say must be beamed live. Everybody throughout South Africa. Because the same television, not the ABC, I'm just saying television, the instrument, right? The same television was used to mislead and lie to people. Yes. The same television. You know, I remember one reporter, he was standing in God, Denver, reporting. This reporter, there's a sewer spillage about 10 meters from him. He's reporting about the extent to which Supra's government has collapsed, to the extent that the sewer spillage, he has even forgotten that uh, sewer spillage and refuse removal is a function of the municipality. Local. <laughs> exactly, local, local. And he says, this is some of the evidence why Supra must go and the people are complaining. And I call him. I say, please turn to your left. He say, why must I turn to your left? Because 15 meters from where he was standing, Nelson Mandela Highway was being constructed by the provincial government. <laughs> next to him, him, next to him, this site is sewer spillage in Denville. This site is a road that is being state of the art road being constructed. He can't report about the road. Why? Because the media was given a mandate to say, you must harm Supra's reputation as much as you can. So that whatever we want to do must convince the people that indeed it is true. 
The same people are driving on that road today, Feli. They don't even want to open it uh, officially. Because uh, if, if it's open officially, you guys might have to report that it was started by, by Mahumapi. That road. And that road was not going to be constructed, by the way. We had to insist that you can't have Mahikeng without a highway that goes into Mahikeng as the capital seat. The other person in that DC is uh, Ramabele. Is Ramabele eh? from Bujana? Ramabele. Ubidua Jojo Matala. This Jojo Matala. For all my participation in the politics of the ANC from the Youth League, he has always been part of the people who are disrupting Mahuma people. When the house was used to pump the narrative that said Supra must go, he was part of the campaign as Supra must go. Today I must sit, he's in the DC, and he must judge whether Supra is right or wrong. And I must accept it because it's discipline. Right? Of the African National Congress. You are a disciplined uh, Keida. You need to do that. So I'm just showing you there's a Mutalapulia horse in that DC, right? Yes. This, this Mutalapulia horse, when we were in Maretani, I will come to the Maratani story now. She says to me, When you are causing trouble in the African National Congress. <laughs> yes, this is Montalipur. Some of you might not know, I taught him how to drive. <laughs> yes, I taught her how to drive. That license that she has is because this boy oh. trained her how to drive. When the ANC was redeploying her to Cape Town, she came to me, Ananara. Listen, <laughs> Ananara. And saying to me, but Comrade Supra, you are the last person to do this to me because you know my problems. And she ended up not going to, to Cape Town. She's very angry with me. Very angry. And I must sit in the DC. And that person must judge me using the constitution of the ANC. And I must say it's a democratic process. Right? Now, in summary, comrades, what happened is that the woman sleek, Bobita, the ANC woman sleek, she's the acting secretary. Né? So the woman sleek sits in a meeting, they take a decision. We are going to be part of the campaign in the by-elections that Umar writes out. We are going to do door-to-door, -door, we are going to do this and this and so on. And then they ask her to send a letter to many people, including Manasapalit. <laughs> yes. Manasapaliti is one of the people who was invited by the ANC Women. I don't know who invited Manasapalit. <laughs> I'm also one of the people who was invited by the ANC Women's League in Maretta to campaign for the ANC. And I went to Maretta and campaigned. Some of you were there, comrades. I was doing door to door. As usual. And the other thing that the Women's League asked me to do was to address women. And I turned. There was a robbing activity of women, of the women's league. And they said, address women. I address women. I never spoke about anyone. You can go and get the video. I was just talking the ANC, its program, its mission, and why people must vote for the ANC. That's why I went to Maretzani. From there, I went to the chief. The chief was very happy. I'm here. Because as part of our tradition, I came here to inform you. The chief was happy. Right? The branch is what, 12? 
would turn. The branch of a red sun was happy. And then later I get a letter, Yahori. You are charged because you went to Maretzani and caused factionalism and divisions and you called you called a parallel activity of the ANC. I never convened any activity. Never. Not that I can't convene one, I can convene many. Right? But I never convened any activity. But where we sit today, Be because I honor the invitation of the ANC Women's League. Why can't they charge the ANC Women's League? As a structure. Yeah. And leave me alone. What is worse, comrades? Kore, as a member of parliament, you elected me to go to parliament. As a member of parliament, Rato is my constituency area. Yes, it is my constituency area. What then in Rato, in Marais, and falls is my constituency. So I don't need an invitation, I don't need a permission. Even from here, I can go straight to Rato to go and do the ANC work there, right? They charge me. Why? Because the message, remember the message. The message of 2018, 2019. The message says Supra must be expelled from the organization. I'm not taking hearsay. It's in the message. Can I wait in self? This buffoon. Some self. Right? And then I get invited by what one? Copot. What one? They say, Murama Humabelo, come. We want to come and explain the phenomenon of revolutionary unity from below. So I go there and I explain this revolutionary unity from below. And then there is a mayor there, Comrade Kotz. Before I speak, just like you are speaking now, Comrade Kotz goes and speaks before me. One of the things he says in what he was saying, Kehore Ena, he has been called upon by the IPC to resign. He's not going to resign. So I stand up and say, Comrade Koso, if you know that you have done nothing wrong, and if you know that your conscience is clean, I agree with you, don't resign. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm simply supporting what he said. And then I get a letter. You are suspended from the African National Congress because you instructed the mayor to defy the IPC and the NEC. You said the mayor must not resign. What type of a leadership is this? Why can't they say, Comrade Supra, you are the leader here, provincial chair, premier, youth league, political education, what, what? Please come, man. Can you just explain to us what was happening there? What is this revolutionary unity from below? Yes. <laughs> right? And then what was this thing about you, Koto? And Koso Rizaini, and I will explain to them, as I'm explaining to you. But because they are chasing me, because they want me out of the African National Congress, they can't call me and say, come and explain, because they know there's no way I will not explain in a way, in a very simple way, that they will be able to understand. <laughs> yes, I will not complicate it. I will make it very simple. If it means Kiberi Kiseri Tini, Lematapa to explain, Kiri, you see, I was here, and this one was sitting here, and then I moved, I moved, moved, moved. <laughs> so that they can understand better. Ah, Katempele, Jesu. You know? But because they are not. She's part of the IPC. This IPC that is charging her and expelling her, she's part of it. <laughs> Biza. They are giving her mandate. The mandate of one is simple, simple. Go and unite the ANC in the province, take it to a conference. Period. Go and unite the ANC in the province, take it to conference. I was still in the IPC by then. But when this IPC, in a meeting of the IPC, first meeting, I said to them, comrades, to get the unity of this province right, we must go to a retreat for three days. In that three days, 
We must tell each other where to get off, who has done what. And I said to them, I've got a lot to say about many of you here in that retreat. And in the discussion, what was the decision? No retreat will happen. Because I was saying to them, after the retreat, let's go sub-region by sub-region to unite the African National Congress. Go branch by branch to unite the African They don't want that process. Because I was saying to them, we must call your branch call. Kokuma. What date? What date? What 35? What 35? We must call it. Maholo. And we must say, comrades, there's a problem of unity in the organization. We want to hear from you as the branch. What is your problem of unity in your branch? Don't tell us about Northwest. They can't take that route. You know why? Some of them don't belong to branches. They don't have branches. Right? That's why some of these people, they come from so far, come and cause problems in your region. Because in their area, he knows Kosala, yes, Kosala. I went to Port, and I mean, I just came to address a branch, and over a thousand people came, and you guys did not come. Right? <laughs> so that you can witness the truth. Hajabe sale patata. Can the people come, come, hey, Mahuma Pilo is come. People just came. Because when people come, it will then dispute the original questionnaireing, but to have a Mahuma Because that was the story sold to some of you. The people, the people don't want it. Learn to answer. The people don't want him, right? But why, why, why? Why is it that when he goes to Pochistru in Sarafina Hall, without him loud hailing, I never did any loud hailing. And people came, we tried to say to them, it's Corona, it's COVID, but Yes. Now, why are you not fighting me yourself? Why are you not attacking me? Because it was said you don't want to. The lie had to be sold. And I must sit down in a DC. People who are giving a loaded gun with acute levels of depression. And I must listen to them. They must convict me. That's why, comrades, I said to Comrade Biza, these people, we must apply for their accuser. Now, this constitution of the ANC, you, the media, it doesn't have recusal. No. The recusal is in the courts. Right? So when there's no recusal here, what do you do? We're well, left with only two steps. I told my fellow accused here. <laughs> <laughs> we have written a letter to the NDCA. It's very simple. 2568. Rule 2568. The member, it means the member, me and you, may at any stage apply to the NDCA to set aside the temporary suspension. I don't know about the permission of YPC. You are the member, may at any stage. So, Rona, at any stage, we have done it, we have applied to the NDCA to set aside this uh, suspension. It's in the Constitution. So you must know, comrades, we are fighting that suspension because the suspension is meant to threaten us. The suspension is meant uh, to make us afraid. The suspension is meant to suppress us. The suspension is meant to damage our political reputation standing in the eyes of the people. How can we suspend a person for going to a meeting? For talking, talking. But when they were more holos, none of those people were in the hall. Over a thousand complained. The person who is complaining is somebody who was not in the meeting. Yes. <laughs> and then I want to expel us from the ANC. Right? It's possible, by the way. Because you know, comrades, the NEC flouted 
this constitution. I was in that meeting in Cape Town. And I said to the NEC, comrades, you are flouting the constitution. The manner in which you are dissolving the PC. The PC was left with two months. The term of office was left with two months. Two months. Why are you in a hurry? <laughs> because you are in a hurry, you are going to make mistakes. And the majority, as you know in the ANC, when the majority has taken a decision, you abide by the decision. And the majority was to take a decision that no one must be dissolved. Fast forward, we went to court. And what did the court say? It teared the decision of the NEC to pieces. And the court said the PC must come back. There are members of the NEC who have called me, comrades, and they have said, Comrade Chairman, the time has now come for us to go to court, not you. And we are going to say to the court, the entire National Executive Committee must be charged with contempt of court. But it's members of the ANC. I say to them, you've got the right uh, to do that. Because sometimes when you are disciplined, you are patient, then your, your patience is stretched to the limit. Right? When you are disciplined, your discipline is stretched to the, uh, to the limit. Now, 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 we have an REC here. The Constitution says, this Constitution, when you suspend an REC, it must not be more than for a period of two months. It's almost a year. So they are a law unto themselves. It's almost a year. What is the NEC doing to this IPC which flouts and breaks the Constitution? Nothing. They suspend an REC here. You are the original secretary. You are elected in a conference. But he can be, because but why? Because no, Ngakamudri Mulema, the balance of forces are not in our favor. Yeah. Right? So what, what makes you think that if you remove the REC, the branches will suddenly follow you? You are going to magnetize them somehow through some osmosis. It's not going to happen. Because if branches have made a decision and thank you for launching our branch. By the way, comrades, the only branch in good standing in this province is one. There's only one branch. It's Ward 12. Ward 12. It was launched by the REC. When the REC launched that branch, they went for the REC. Where was Sinya? What a katakanya? Ukosari parallele. And then they put somebody there who, can, who, who doesn't have a branch. But again, I coordinate. Let me find my tag. Ralo number twenty three, but it's done. When the discussion, let me find my tag. Now, so I'm charged for Maretani, and then charged and suspended for Kuma and JB Mark Sarafina Hall for simply talking politics of the ANC. Simple. You know what is it that I said there? And I want to repeat here. I'm happy this media. Simple. Comrades, gone is the time. Yahore, Hoti, unit is when you bring leaders together, they must discuss and they share positions in the PC. No, it's gone. That thing is not going to happen. What I said, and I'm repeating it now, because the branches of the ANC are the last line of defense, the branches of the ANC, what 12 and what 6 and what 7, they must come together. What 1, what 30, what 35 must come together. They must discuss as branches on who must be in the leadership of the province. As branches. And when the branches have discussed on their own, they must pronounce on who they want in the PEC. So when you are not active in your branch, the branch will not nominate you. Because also a leadership, leadership, leadership come together. Hey, Muteto, leadership will be gone. Mm. Now I'm no longer going to be in any discussion. Yeah, what had to bring unity and low and low leader must come into the structure. 
We have done that for many years. It has not worked. Right? If your branch doesn't nominate you, if the delegates don't uh, elect you, you must abide by the decisions of the branches. Yes. Right? If the branches say, we want you at home, you must go home. In 2000, uh, some of you suggested me to be the provincial secretary. I lost. In civic centre in Rustenburg, I lost. And we just accepted the outcome. No problem. So you branches must go and decide, uh, comrades. The other thing that I think we must, we must do, we must not be cowards, comrades, right? These letters are meant to intimidate us. My suggestion to you as branches, and I told my chairperson and my branch, from now onwards, every weekend, the branches must come together to do the following things. One, the branches must come together every weekend to run political education classes. Every weekend. You need nobody's permission from nowhere. You don't even need the permission of the National Executive Committee because it is required in the resolutions of the ANC and the Constitution that we must raise the level of political understanding and maturity in the ANC, right? So every weekend, turn up hands. Political education, every weekend, on our own as branches. Two, every weekend, let the branches come together to arrange campaigns. We must clean the townships, the villages, the graveyards. We must clean the school. The third thing, like the reward visa was saying, the former teacher, Members of the NC must volunteer with our extra classes for our kids, Baba Limko Skolom, for our matriculants. Rao Tuana, get comrades. Ravo Mela, Radumala. You don't need the regional secretary's permission to do that. Call other comrades to come and facilitate your political classes. As branches, because you are the basic units of the African National Congress. So I just thought today you must know the suspension and uh, what are the reasons, because I never spoke and I never explained to you as members why we are suspended, why we have been chased, why we get letters, and so on. At least you know now. You get it from the horses. Mouth. You don't need to go and read some newspaper. I'm done with that. I want to come to your, your, your matter of interest. Step aside. <laughs> the media, right? I'm now going to speak slowly again. <laughs> At Nazareth, we took a resolution. The resolution is under the heading Integrity, Corruption, in the African National Congress. Now, in summary, the resolution here, any accused member, because when you are accused of corruption, né? that's one. Two, when you are reported to be involved in corruption, right? Now remember, the, 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 the resolution doesn't explain who is an accused. <laughs> right? It says if you are accused. So the resolution assumed that everybody understands or when you say you are accused. And our understanding, comrades, is that uh, when you are an accused, it means you must have been formally been accused in a court of law. Formally. So it says when you are accused. And then it says when you are reported. And then the resolution doesn't say this reporting is where. Is it when you are reported to a police station or to the public protector or to the Hawks or to the SIU or to the Tudor House or to Integrity Committee or when I report to the branch chair because I'm also reporting if you do that, right? It says so. The third thing it says, such people must summarily be suspended because they refuse or they fail to give, the, well, I must underline the weight. They fail to give acceptable explanation. And the, the, the resolution doesn't say who comes to a decision that your 
reporting or your explanation is acceptable. It's not there, you can go and read it. So our assumption is that the structure that must deal with the acceptability of your explanation, it is the integrity committee. Huh? It's an assumption. It's not, the resolution doesn't say so. We are assuming that uh, it says so. Which means, comrades, that when the integrity committee gives you, the media, the public, a report, it must be able to say, Mukete Mukete came here, Supra Mahuma Peer, and he explained himself. And we have ruled whether his explanation is acceptable or is not acceptable. They must not end there. They must say the tool we use to arrive at a decision as to whether the decision is acceptable or non-acceptable, it is this tool. So it means there must be some tool that is developed by the integrity committee to judge whether your explanation is acceptable or is not acceptable. Do you have that tool today? No. Do you have it as the branches? No. So who must step aside? And how? Right. And how? And what is the tool? We are not saying people must not step aside, right? We are just saying that the process must be neat. Right? It doesn't end there, the resolution. It says, if, if, if you are accused and you are reported, you must also consider voluntarily stepping down while facing investigation, discipline, or prosecution. Ira <laughs> <laughs> so what they have done? But cut the other things I said. Ban Sauli that part. So I just felt suspect you are going to be in. Come on, Luffy, you come on, Luffy. Yeah, people can be naughty. So comrades, right and I'm saying it to the media now. You are because uh, you make assumptions. Super is closer to Ace, so he's likely to say Ace must not step aside. For the record, the resolution says any member of the ANC who feels who he has wronged the state, the organization, he's accused, he's charged, wara wara. One of the things that member must do is to voluntarily step aside. Now, Nama Humapelo SOR, I don't end there. I'm saying this resolution of the ANC at the bottom there. It says that uh, the ANC must respect the constitution of the republic and the rule of law. Now, when we force you to step aside, we don't do voluntary, right? We force you to step aside. And when you don't step aside, after forcing you, we push you into the disciplinary committee. We are flouting the constitution of the republic. We are flouting the constitution of the republic. Because the constitution of the republic says you are innocent until proven guilty. You are innocent until proven guilty or otherwise. Right? It means if we remove you from your position by force and you don't come out voluntarily, we force you to come out. And when you don't, we push you into the disciplinary committee. We are flouting the constitution of the country. And the ANC can flout the constitution of the country. What, do, what must we then do? Simple. 
What was supposed to happen, comrades, after Nasrin, is that the leadership, the National Executive Committee, before publishing the resolutions of conference, they were supposed to take the resolutions to the best lawyers in the country. <laughs> so that the lawyers would check if every clause of the ANC complies with the laws of the Republic. It's quite clear that that was not done. Because if it was done, the, the experts in law will have told us that some parts of your resolutions are in conflict with the law of the Republic. So what do we do? Some parts of our resolutions are in conflict with the law, and life must go on, the revolution must go on. My own view, and you must hear me, my own view, S.O.R. Mahuma Pilo from 6, 7, and 12, I'm saying part of that resolution which are in conflict with the law must be suspended until we go to the next national conference. Yes. If you suspend part of the, of the resolution which are in conflict with the law, the ANC is achieving two things. One is complying with its own resolution at the same time, it is complying with the law of the Republic. What you must then do is that people who are accused, who are arrested, who are wara wara, the leadership must call them and master the art of necessary political engagement. So the leadership must not run out of patience to engage comrades who standing in society might be such that it's affecting the standing and the integrity of the ANC. Out of that engagement, which is part of the art of managing the dynamics of politics, there will then be other members of the ANC who will say voluntarily, I'm stepping aside. So why? Why? Is the leadership of the ANC causing so, so much tension? instead of just arriving at this decision. But because the NEC is not doing it, we must do it, the branches. Comrades, if we agree, the branches must write to the NEC and say, according to our understanding of the Constitution of the Republic, some aspects, not the resolution, some aspects of our resolution is in conflict with the law. And to cure, to cure the problem of being in conflict with the law, the only structure that can do it is not the NEC. The only structure that can do it is the national conference. It means those little aspects which are in conflict with the law must be sorted next day in December in the conference. Then there's peace in the NC. Yes. <laughs> then there'll be peace in the NC, right? But when you, when, you, when, you, when you take decisions based on political expediency, and some of the, the decisions you can read an agenda in them. Comrade Ace, some of you were delegates. In a hall at Nazareth, there are people who said they are taking the outcome of the elections of the top six to court. Yes. But they are only taking to court the position of the Secretary General. Some of you will remember, nah, mandated by the same branch, I went outside, I spoke to you guys at Nazareth, the media, and I said, the delegates are saying, if there is going to be an approach to the court that seeks to annul the results of the Secretary General position, not ACE, of the Secretary General position, we are going to demand as delegates in plenary of conference that from the president up to the last position of the top six, we must re-vote. Re-vote. And then it didn't happen. Now, it shows you, Hori, some of the comrades have had problems with comrade A's inside the hall. And then what you do, when he escapes that, you look for a, a moment of opportunity to get at him. Because you want to get at him, 
You are unable even to thoroughly look at the, of the resolutions of the ANC, whether they are complying with the law or they are not complying with the law, because you are driven by the agenda to annihilate and peripherize Isma Khashoggi. You lose your necessary political objectivity because you are driven by a nefarious political agenda to peripherize him. And in the process, you make mistakes. Comrades, if anybody can go to court and challenge the decision, the legality of the decision of the National Executive Committee, on the rights that must accrue to citizens who happen to find themselves in the ANC. Anybody who can go to court will win in court against the African National Congress because our decision is flouting some aspects of the law of the Republic. So a thinking leadership will be able to see that the struggle coming to avoid that trouble, Yakura, other members of the ANC go this way, others go to court, others do what and so on, to cure that problem. Let us make sure that we comply with our own resolution, but its aspects which are not complying with the law, cure them. And you can only cure that at the national conference, because it is the only body that took a decision, a resolution on that uh, conference decision. There's no other body. So this is from what six, what seven. This things that I'm saying is high level. <coughs> they trained us to say this thing, so I'm representing them. <laughs> right, Mr. Comrades. So the media, Lumutuile Mahuma Pelu today, on step aside, right? And I'm not saying so and so must step aside, so and so must not, so and so. No, no, no. I'm not there yet. That time is coming. Hold I'm just putting a principle. Yahore, some aspects of the ANC resolution are in conflict with the law. the law. And we have elected an NEC. It is the responsibility of the NEC in between conferences to lead. Now, the NEC must lead on this matter. If it doesn't lead, the branches are going to lead. So this is a global matter, and I thought I must do my best to explain it in English so that I'm not misquoted. But I'm going to it in Right? Explain it in English. And then you are going to want me for interviews and wara wara, you will not see me. I'm on suspension. I'm going to hey, Mahuma Pilu, we want an interview with you one on one. So when you are very lucky, those who are here, right? Because there's no one on one. Because of the problem, we have people with acute levels of depression. <laughs> so one-on-one -on -one can happen for you, Khalik Sahur. Right? So that is on step uh, aside thing, step aside thing. Kilebaleti resolution ya ya conference. I hope Lisiya mi kumri zage. Yeah. So negerge thalo se namurama umapi. The step aside thing today. So I've explained it, right? Khonale munna manasa palit. He he was supposed to sleep in a government house in Mahike, where you comrades are staying. Kolowe manasa palit. And then municipality decided that he's not going to sleep there when he was an honorable member. He was sleeping at Task Hotel in Mahike, right? Instead of sleeping at a dedicated house from government, from the state. Now, he thought that that information is hidden sealed. and sealed. So that information is available. <laughs> Una swiper, credit card, your government. 
Arroba la cu. So oversight activists, do your oversight. Grow and a member of the legislature. Do your oversight, right? Go and look for the information you were talking about, Comrade Bison. Who went to Exco and suggested that Bob Recording Studios must be sold? Go and ask. Who said Bob Recording Studios must be sold? He brought that proposal to Exco. It's not me, Manasa Palit. <laughs> They're gone. Bob Recording Studios. When Supra stands up in the state of the province address in Marikana and say we are going to follow Metalaya, what happened to Bob Recording Studios? The ANC government inherited a majority shareholding in Sun International. My sin was to say, where is the money out of the selling of the share of the government in Sun International? Where is the money? I said, Bunati Compute, I want to see money received. <laughs> There's no money received. But the majority shareholding of the, of the government has been sold. You move all over the province here. There are incomplete structures of houses, the foundation. And I said we are counting all these foundations. After counting them, we want people who took decisions to award the tender. We want people who were HODs. We want the CFOs. We want the MECs who were there by then. They must answer for it. why contractors were paid when houses were not built. I said that in Sopa, Pomaricana, my last Sopa. And when I say that, and people don't have houses. I said, there are people who are giving work to go and dig boreholes in order to supply people with water. Let's go and measure the depth of every borehole and look at the work that was given to that contractor. Whether we pillar the necessary meters that we needed, that we paid for. And then they turn around and say, he's corrupt, he's corrupt, he's corrupt, he's corrupt, he's corrupt. I met somebody from the Eastern Cape, Kitu Lezegwe Port. He comes and says, Prasupra, you don't know me. I just want to tell you that I was one of the business people who was approached to donate money. And we donated in totality over 35 million for your downfall. Yes, don't quote me anywhere. Here is my number. If you want me one day, I can help you. But I can tell you, we were business people in the Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Northwest, and Gauteng. We were commanded from Mitrent in Johannesburg. And we were told, if we don't dish out the money, you are going to deal with us if we don't remove you. So, right? So, people who were organizing the pledge, today we must say to them, hey, cadres, leaders. I wrote to the ANC about these people who came to apologize that they were paid money, giving drugs, and so on. The ANC was not interested in that letter. Not. The Minister of Police was all over in Mahigan during the Supramas Fall campaign. One person lost her life in Munsiwa. Buildings were brought down, they were burned. Anybody arrested? No. Nobody. Not even one. You've got military intelligence, you've got uh, intelligence, you've got police, you've got 
all the power to know who was behind the burning of the building. Not even a single person was arrested. You must go and think for yourself why. Why? Mavana was bent down. Anybody arrested? No, no. Any investigation? Why? Huh? You go and think for yourself. Why? The leadership came to Mahike and said, Mahike is burning. They arrived in Mahike. I'm there. Still the premier by then. They don't meet the premier. To, for the premier to account for what is happening here. I thought maybe they will call Exco or call your Exco. No Exco called. So who gave the report here where there is a problem? In the province, from the government side, who gave the report, which was then used as a reason to invoke Section 100? We want a copy of that report, because now it's not required. To, I never gave any report. That's why, that's partly media. That's partly why I'm going to the NCOP. I'm going to ask the NCOP, why did you not ask for a report of the FIFA administration, which was led by Supra, on why there was instability in Mahike? Not Northwest, it was in Mahike. In Mahike. Why is the report? Dolor. So you will watch me that day if the NCOP allows you. Because I want to say names of people there. And some of them are high ranking, very high ranking uh, leaders of the African National Congress. And I want to expose the extent to which we use our position, some of us, to drive nefarious political dirty agendas. Dirty. When I went out as the premier, I went out. I hear on radio, he's refusing to bring back the cars and, and the passports. And... <laughs> oh, but when would he? Okay, we look at the law, it says 30 days or so. There must be a report from people who are dealing with security. And I say to them, now my hands are not broken. And I've got a driver's license. So take your cars. It discusses your more legislature about it. Pray, you must go and take the official passport. <laughs> that person who was saying so, <laughs> you must go and take out the print. The print, yes. From Libby uh, Santiago Parliament. Uh, not ITC. Hansat. That person who was speaking in, in the legislature, said, we want our passport. That person today is in the DC. <laughs> The DC that I'm sitting in. That person who said, we want the passport. <laughs> because Supra must be dealt with. So this agenda, comrades, we must uh, deal with it appropriately, right? We must not be afraid. We must deal uh, with it. So the branches that are here, you must know. You are likely to be suspended or you'll be dissolved. Yes, branches. When that happens, the branches must... Let me come out. Because this constitution of the ANC gives you the power to do everything in line with the constitution of the African National Congress. I want to thank my branches again. What six? What seven? What twelve? For Lebiri Lemu Ramutu, Samaya Oye, Hai, Malu African National Congress, Abata Huk, and I'm happy comrades of Rempile di Seve. I can exaggerate it. was not to come around deliberately because they are legal yeah, in nature. But I didn't exaggerate. What I said today here, I can say it anywhere. And I'm happy you guys are here with your cameras, 
South African side, Sai Koperasi, as he saw, and uh, uh, Room News, new, new, News Room Africa. He was like a new Room Rus. <laughs> news Room Africa, Lelonality, Lebadi Radio Fabate. So, we do my liability to hear what Mahuma Pelu was saying. I'm called a monster. I'm not that bad <laughs> to be called a monster. I'm not like that. I've never been uh, like that. I know about Comrade Pizza Woman, Sliki Aban Pizza Barry. No, maybe you must come as foundation to activities and so on. But I got one that it's expulsion and suspension, and, and I refuse. Uh, comrades, I can't, uh, in my conscience, behave as if I'm not a member of the ANC. Right? It's not possible. Right? Even if you take away... The membership is a paper. Right? It's a paper. But they can't take away your ANC-ness in you. So the ANC-ness in me cannot be taken away. You can take the card. And when the ANC-ness is still with me, I can go to any member, any branch. Those who want to visit me, comrades, you can visit me. You're going to charge people for visiting. We are charging visitors. You visited. So visit. Visit and chairman. Right? Hey, little lady visited. Uh, chairman, delegation after delegation, Rabbi Tirili Tzilen Refita Rutsama. Let the chairman, right? So get a lamb One thing I nearly forgot: branches. Don't overload the, the leadership. You know what, comrades? There's this issue of JZ and the media and the Zondo Commission and the courts and so on. You don't understand it. Who palango as a branch using Rule Five? You must write to Comrade JZ's branch and say, we want to visit you. The following branches want to visit President Zuma's branch. And during the visit, we want you to invite one of your members there, who was the president of this country. He must be in that meeting of their branch. Go to the branch meeting in KwaZulu Natal. You don't know the details about Isma Hasule, what is happening, you see it on TV. He's from Paris. Don't call AIDS. Write to his branch, from one branch to the other, and say, we want to come together as branches. We want your member in Paris to come and explain for we are Halankai. You are not breaking any law. <laughs> It means the branches of the ANC throughout the country must start visiting one another. They share views on various issues affecting the country. So let's go to Paris. Let's go to Mkanda. Let's go. I think we end the level today. So I don't send the delegates in here. We are visiting. And I announce for everybody to know in the country there are visitors going to. This time around, it's not, there's no things like tea and coffee and so. No, no. It's a revolutionary duty. A branch of the ANC has written to Namalala branch in Nkanta to say, We are visiting you. This is the agenda. We don't hide the agenda. And last sentence please invite your member, former president of the Republic, of the ANC to be in that meeting. And in that meeting you say, Namalala, we are here as the branches. Before we pronounce on any other things about you, we want you to tell us your story. We want to hear your story from yourself. Now, who's the chair like It's true. You go to the branch, I ask something, Utali Jwez. Utali Jwez, Samanabis. Right? Ichi. Agar li enza gan naka yip. Kama humabi. So do it, other leaders. Kalele sabonim kwa sasa. 
Right where branch go biulo kwa ko kaizenleri. We want to come and visit you in your branch. It's a radical economic transformation. And by the way, comrades, you members of the branches, part of the political education, you must discuss what is this radical economic transformation and how do you understand it. From there, you must call the NEC members to say, please explain to us, when did the ANC abandon its posture on the economy of the country because the ANC has always been a radical organization? I think there's an NEC position here if you can talk about radical economic transformation, Jason Dimuleke. Because radical economic transformation includes other things for black people in general and Africans in particular. control with the problem with white people but it's it's a problem Hori, in a population where the majority are black and african eight percent of so level of manas Manasa Paliti, Lou Wille Lahore, Nernalie, Kodala Revil, Manasa Paliti, Ener Mutui, Mono Lahore, Ari. That's why I'm saying these things that I'm saying here, I can say them anyway. Amanda! Away.
اواتو ماتا كارونا Uh, that was uh, Supra Momo Pedro ANC uh, Interim Provincial Committee briefing branches on suspended uh, party members. A lot to, uh, was said there by uh, the former ANC chairperson and Northwest uh, Premier during his uh, suspension. So uh, he says that the last word comes from branches of the ANC. When all fails, last hope is at the branches, the last line of defense of the revolution. He was also talking about, uh, he, will, well, he mentioned uh, people wanted to get rid of him within the ANC spoke quite extensively about the step aside issue, mentioning that some principles within the ANC are at odds uh, with uh, the law. So obviously then uh, a lot being said at this time and no doubt uh, we will continue uh, to uh, put analysis on uh, what was said today by uh, the former ANC uh, chairperson in our later uh, bulletins. The full view will be with you at uh, 6 p.m. That's it from myself, Flora Dwaba and the rest of the team here at uh, SA Today. Continue to take care of yourselves. I'll be back with you on uh, Tuesday. Tomorrow, uh, Colin uh, takes over on uh, SA Today.